Hello and welcome to the Natural Balance Hoof Care Corner. For the next couple of sessions, we're going to be talking about just normal trimming, trimming for horses that are not used and also those that are ridden. And the purpose in this is to uh, bring to, to surface uh, a better understanding of how important it is to keep horses' feet trimmed up, what structures are involved in protecting the coffin bone, and how important it is to maintain the hoof wall around those structures. And uh, the basic principles that we use uh, that apply to shoeing apply very similar to the trimmed foot as well. The medial lateral balance, the anterior posterior balance, all are still of vital importance to the, to the horse's health and well-being. So uh, what we're going to do here today is this, this little guy uh, needs to be ridden a lot, but unfortunately he isn't. And so his feet tend to get a little bit long. Normally in this area their feet stay very short but it's winter time and he's just been idle around the haystack so thing, his feet have gotten quite long uh, which is what we don't uh, recommend but I'll show you some things that uh, tend to compensate for that extra growth as well. If you look at this foot you'll see that it's filled completely full of dirt and that's an intricate part of, of, of what's important about this horse being that his foot is real long. You'll notice that the dirt actually exceeds the length of the height of his heels. So he's getting a lot of good frog contact through all of that dirt. The harder pack that dirt is in the bottom of his foot, the, the better it helps to maintain normal foot function. So in this particular case, the horse is really not as bad off as you might think with that extra long foot, simply because all of this dirt that's in here is satisfying part of those needs that he would be getting once we get all of this hoof wall trimmed away. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to trim this, get rid of all of that dirt for now, so we can get a better look at the structures inside. Now this particular time of year, this horse is starting to exfoliate some, and so this, this part of the foot that's chalky is going to be removed. And I'm going to take it down very little, only enough to remove that part that's separating from these uh, little frag, uh, fracture lines here. You see how that's cleaning up real easily? I don't want to take any more off than that simply because that's the functional part of the sole that he needs to protect himself. I'm going to trim only very little of the frog, just enough to ensure that it's just nice and healthy material underneath. If you look at the back part of this frog, you'll see that the center part is, is spread wide open, and that's, what's, that's important that that maintain itself that way. And that's the nice thing about the dirt being compacted in there. It's kept that frog open. It's kept the heels wide apart. And it's made that foot made basically pretty functional. The next part that we're going to maintain is just a little bit of this frog around the very back part. If you've listened to some of the sessions that we've had before, you'll understand the importance of this back part of the frog and how it satisfies the needs of proprioception and, and helps the blood circulation and dissipates energy and whatnot. And so I'm going to leave as much of that as I can and trim the heels accordingly to that. So the rest of the foot looks pretty good. The bars uh, are nice and wide here. And I've just basically run my knife over the top of them, and if there's no black line down underneath here, then that bar gets left intact. The same is true with this side. If the bars become fractured, then they get removed. That's Mother Nature's way of saying there's too much of that bar that's there, and I just need to remove a little bit of it. Same thing is true with the rest of the hoof wall. So basically it's a matter of cleaning out this exfoliating material around the front part of the foot, and if you look at there, I've just taken, eliminated right to the level of the sole. I'm going to go ahead and draw some lines on the foot, just like we do with uh, the horses that we're going to shoe. I'm going to try to find the widest part of the foot. And if you look right at this arc around here, you'll see that right about where the bars terminate, approximately an inch back. This is a smaller foot, so the distance is going to be a little bit less. There's the <clears throat> widest part of his foot. And I'm going to go about an inch forward of the apex. There's the apex of the frog. That's going to be where his breakover point is. If you look at this real closely, you'll see a slight raised area there. That's the sole callus. That's the protective uh, membrane or the, the horn tubules that protect the coffin bone, the circumflex artery, and the vein. I'm going to grab a hoof model here and show you from inside what that's all about. 
This is a freeze-dried uh, hoof model that is prepared spe specifically for educational purposes. And if you look at this on the inside, there's two segments here um, that, you, that you don't oftentimes get a, a, an appreciation for. If you look at this sole, now I've just exfoliated the sole on the bottom of this guy's foot, and this is what you're going to see right here. This is the extra layer of specialized sole material beneath, beneath the tip of the bone. This is the P3, and it's very crisp, the sharp border right there, and it's very fragile. So all of this material right here is necessary to protect that, that part of the bone. There's an artery and a vein that are closer to the ground than that as well, that need uh, equal protection that's the life force of this whole internal structures. Now on this other side <clears throat> you'll see where this has been prepared much like you would expect for a shoe and you'll notice that the greater portion of this sole has been removed and this is oftentimes this oftentimes happens uh, just to maintain some pasture and alignment and you have to be real careful with getting this too close and especially if the horse is just being trimmed and is being uh, out in a pasture or especially if they're being if they're being ridden the thing that you have to remember is that if you if the horses if they're if they're extremely sore after they've been trimmed each and every time uh, then it leaves this border of the bone closer to the ground and it uh, leaves it vulnerable to being fractured and uh, damaged in in a variety of different ways and the whole existence of the horse is going to depend on whether this bone stays healthy or not. So that's one of the things that we wanted to bring up with this session is the importance of how this sole protects the bone and how we're going to trim the foot with a, in a way that will protect that bone from, uh, from harm's way. That's all the time we have for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll continue with this session next week and uh, so we look forward to seeing you then. Hello and welcome back to the Natural Balance Hoof Care Corner. We're going to continue on this week with the, uh, with the trimming of the front foot and, uh, and then we'll, from there we'll go into the back foot. Okay, one of the things I want to point out here is that this horse's normal movement that he's incurred over the last couple of months since he's been trimmed, he's actually worn the toe of this off just very much like you would a shoe that's been worn. If you see as I place that rasp on there, there's a bit of a rocker that has occurred as a result of that and the high points are right there. We're going to duplicate those high points, but much farther back on the foot as we remove this wall. So it's important to put that accent back into his foot without getting too close to the sensitive structures. And this is the key to getting that done. I'm going to draw a line around here just to ensure that I don't get too close in my initial trimming, and especially at these two spots on each side because this rocker here is the high part and we're going to transfer that right down to this sole level and leave this area just slightly higher than the sole to add a little bit of protection for the next few days. <clears throat> if you look at this foot you'll see that behind this what we call a pillar point the wall is broken away. That's a normal function of the foot and we're going to duplicate that as well. All of these structures are just going to be minimized and closer to the level of the sole to bring the ratio from this part now that is longer here. We're going to try to make this distance greater back here. I'll show you how that's done. That's good anterior posterior balance. So I'm going to trim behind this pillar point down into the level of the sole right next to that exfoliated portion and as I get to the heel area I'm going to just leave it up just a little bit to help complement this height of this frog. Same thing is going to happen over here behind this pillar point I go right to the level of the sole equally on both sides. In doing so I'm going to I know for sure that the bottom of the bone is equal height to the th thickness of this exfoliated sole. Now the next step I'm going to leave this line intact and place my nippers forward and just cut all the way across the front of this to minimize that height. So what I've done is I've left just a small portion of this wall above the level of the sole in this area. The distance that I'm going to rocker will be across this line that will shorten this distance and now you can see as I've trimmed the heels down because they slope forward the more I trim them down 
the farther they present themselves in the back of the foot. Okay, now that I've got this trimmed uh, near the level of the sole, I'm going to go ahead and reinstate this roll that, has, that was presented there before. And I'm going to go through this little line that I've drawn, and that's all right because I've got two bearing points right here that are going to take this sole off the ground right here at this point. And I don't want to have a great deal of wall above there, so I'm going to round it off just a little bit, make it nice and smooth, just like it was before I trimmed it, but only closer to the, struc to the functional structures of the foot. So there we go. We have now this roll back in the foot. At that level right there, you can see where there's about a rasp's width from the widest part of the foot forward. And if you recall, remember this distance was quite a bit greater. I'm going to flatten these heels off just a little bit, right like so. Not a great deal, but just enough to where they have good stolid bearing. And now I've got this portion of the foot to the back of the frog a greater distance. Now the frog is the last, the buttress of the frog is the last bearing structure of the foot. So now it has taken over the height of the heels that were now, that were once this, in this position here. Now the frog is taking over the last support structure in the back of the foot. So we now have a greater distance from the widest part to the rear via the frog in this very important area here that helps to stimulate the receptors as well as dissipate energy and transfer blood. If you notice the heels had grown forward some and because of that the bars had gotten a bit of a curve to them and so before I leave this foot I'm going to just take a little bit of the top of that off just to help straighten those bars just a little bit. What's going to happen is this frog now that takes precedence over the height of the heels is going to help to encourage the back part of this heel to straighten some in the next month or so. So just a little bit of trimming right on the top edge helps to straighten that structure out. And other than that, it's basically pretty good. We're going to move to the front now and remove any flares around the outside edge that may have developed from this foot being too long. Okay, you can see what, uh, what improvement there is in the foot right now and you can also see this little roll that we've reestablished in the front part of that foot which really takes away from its gross length. You can see the roll that was previous there, previously there in this foot here. Uh, basically all we've done is just eliminated the hoof wall in a very much the same manner as it was presenting itself to begin with. And we haven't taken anything away from the sole. We've only exfoliated the chalky material, which would have been eliminated if the foot was allowed to wear itself down. Now what will happen is that sole will get real tough. It's the most quickly, mod it's the most responsive material that responds to needs in the, in the bottom of the foot. That sole will get rock hard in a few days if the weather changes and gets real dry. And uh, what we're going to do now is just eliminate some of that flare that has developed as a result of the extra length. To do that, we're going to use the hoof stand here, which, uh, the hoof jack, which is really a helpful tool to get the horse comfortable, first of all, put him in his comfortable position. And not only that, but it makes it a lot easier for me. It's a good sturdy device, which, which really has been a great tool for especially us aging farriers so that we can get uh, a lot more work done with a lot less effort. So, it's just one of the things too, but it's also extremely important to, for the comfort of the horse. And it's a matter of just finding the widest, the, the ring that's closest to the bottom here and just minimizing, just taking that down until it's perfectly straight from top to bottom. And we round the edge up, round at least half of the thickness of that wall into that white zone and I'll show you that when I get done here. We do the same on both sides. This roll that you put around here is is very important. It'll, it'll, it'll be what would normally happen if this horse was out and on some fairly abrasive ground. If you look at those two feet now, you'll see just what little grooming I did around the dorsal aspect of the foot, how much of a difference it made in just making it really like a well-worn natural foot. And that's basically all we're doing is just treat, keeping the foot in its normal natural perspective. And if you if you studied, or if you looked at any of the studies that have been done on wild horses' feet, you'll realize that the hoof wall was never allowed to grow beyond the level of the sole, 
and the roll was always in the toe and just like it is on shoes that are pulled off of horses. So that's basically what we're trying to duplicate is just what would normally happen if this horse had the freedom to be in the open spaces that they were intended to be. And uh, now we as farriers or hoof care practitioners have to be responsible for that. So it's important to know uh, what's involved here, what, uh, what the natural life cycle of the foot is. That way we're going to be better able to duplicate what it would normally happen in the wild. Now we'll come back around here and look at the bottom and you'll see that I've rounded this edge right into close to this white zone. This is the strata medium of the foot and you'll see that I've still got plenty of height here, plenty of height there and a bit of a roll off the front. The most important thing is these sections. You'll see how much greater this back part is. That's real important for this guy and with every horse. Nice healthy foot. A little closer sequence in trimming and he'll be just fine or just ride him enough and he'll keep his feet worn by himself. That's all the time we have for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll continue with this session next week and uh, so we look forward to seeing you then. Welcome back to the Natural Balance Hoof Care Corner. We're going to continue this series with uh, trimming uh, barefooted horses. We're going to work on the back foot now and, and show you the slight differences between front and back. A lot of the things you'll see will be much the same, but the hind foot has a different function. Uh, as, as, I, as we mentioned in previous sessions, the horse in the front foot actually fulcrums over the top of his leg and on the hind foot they actually can pick that leg up at a variety of different times because they have to move around their rear end in a different way than they do the front. So we're going to trim the foot slightly different. However, the sole structure has still got the same job that it does of protecting the coffin bone. The frog still has its basic function of dissipating energy and transferring blood and all of those things. So, but we're going to treat the front of the foot just slightly different. So, to save a little time, I've cleaned this foot out just a little bit beforehand because sometimes this dirt gets packed in there so hard and of course it's doing a proper job by being in there, but it's, uh, it sometimes can be time consuming to, <clears throat> to have to clean it out. <clears throat> and there's been times when I've spent more time cleaning the foot out than I actually have in trimming it. So, if you look at this frog, it's good and healthy again. There's, uh, I'm going to trim the corners just a little bit just so I can get my tools around that foot just some. But basically it's a matter of just cleaning that chalky material out, especially with horses that are barefooted, because you don't want to take away any more than what is absolutely necessary to find your references here in the bottom of the foot. I'm going to draw some lines across that real quick. A couple of different ways you can do that. There's basically the widest part of the foot. It's really common for a hind foot to be bisected equally from front to back. And again, remember, if the frog is close to the ground, that's the last bearing point. So as I look at this, I'm going to go ahead and draw another line around here just so that I don't get trimmed too close to that sole. It's very important because that's the structure that protects that coffin bone. Okay. Again, I'm using the cradle here on the hoof jack because it's mostly because it's comfortable for the horse. But secondly, it gives me an opportunity to, to take a rest if I need to. And especially when I'm trying to talk and trim at the same time, sometimes you just need to take that little break. So at the same time, the horse is comfortable. So I'm going to basically trim from this portion of his foot right down into the quarter where that widest part is treating the heel very much like I did the front foot start to come up just a little bit towards the back. I want the back part of that frog to take precedence over the ground. Same thing is true here. And the reason why I trim this way is that it ensures that I don't get too close over the sole. I've drawn, drawn a line around there so that when I put my nippers in here and now I can go all the way around above the level of that line to ensure that I haven't trimmed him too close. Now if there's a, an occasion, and there is quite often, horses that have gotten a real long toe, meaning this distance from here to the end of the wall is two inches or better, I'm going to rocker that toe just like I did the front one. In this particular case, if I, rock, if I take a little of this flare off, I'm going to get equal proportions here, so I'm not concerned about rockering the toe 
on this foot here. It's just basically normal trimming when I'm going to tend to this guy. I'm going to show you this uh, foot before I trimmed it off. You'll notice that there's the inside edge of that hoof wall right there, and it's basically rolled all the way around. And this environment is fairly abrasive when it's not real wet. And so in, in every instance that I've ever encountered horses that wear their feet naturally, this is the way the hind foot seems to wear. It's just kind of a gradual roll from the very inside edge of the wall to the around the outside. And this helps them to minimize the extra width that it would incur to getting them to move off of their foot you know, around barrels, uh, cutting, cutting horses and, and uh, event horses of all kinds. It's real important to maintain the foot in less width in the back feet and in the front as well, just because it's e easier for them to manipulate around themselves. So I'm going to duplicate that on this particular, on this foot. <coughs> And I'm going to start right here at this edge. I'm just going to roll that around there. And this is that white zone of the foot. That's the very inside edge. And I use that as my guide. And this can be down exactly to the level of the sole, but certainly not into the sole. It's just right at that same level. And you see the angle at which I'm making this roll around here. Now the frog is taking precedence over it. I, if I've trimmed that much off the foot, I generally don't like to have the apex enter that much direct contact, but the back of the frog can take all of the support that it can. Okay, and that's all I've just flattened off the top of the heels just a little bit. I'm going to check my bars. There's a bit of a curve there. I'm just going to take the very top of that off, and you can see how it's straightened it right out. But there's still weight bearing in these two back corners. I want this much of the bar right here to be loaded just like the back of this heel. Okay, we're going to pull his foot forward here. and it Looks like I've got this a little bit too tall. It's one thing about it, it's nice to adjust that. You have a short horse like this, he certainly wouldn't want to enjoy having his foot up that high. So it's nice to have it adjustable where if you had a workhorse, possibly that would be plenty of height for him. Again, the same thing. I'm going to find the most prominent ring below the halfway point, which in hind feet, they don't flare nearly as much. But in this particular guy, he's got a bit of a ridge there. And I'm just going to minimize that, get it down to where it's pretty straight from top to bottom. And I'm going to let my rasp touch up here occasionally, just to see that I get it nice and straight. Now, I'm going to round this off just a little bit more, especially right in the toe, because it looked like it was just a little too pointy. And because of this flare, I wanted to just back it up just a little bit from the front side, just so that it helps stay back underneath of himself. Okay, and then it's the same thing on the bottom. It's just rolling that edge right back to that white zone. Okay. I really appreciate you uh, tuning in each week. We've, we've got lots and lots of people who have called in and said they really got a big, a uh, lot of information out of these uh, short classes that we have each week, and we really appreciate your cards and letters and, and your comments. So uh, feel free to call us if you have any questions, and uh, I hope this information that you've gotten from these sessions of, uh, in the trimming has been helpful to you, at least in being able to understand what tr keeping a horse's feet trimmed is all about, what structures are involved in that, and how important it is. We'll probably have other sessions that'll deal with some of the biomechanics of the foot that you'll be able to add to this session as well. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to continue all kinds of different things over the uh, next couple, three, four months, and uh, hopefully you'll get a better understanding of how the foot works and what's important. Thanks very much.